Hello. I've got another one from the book along list that my library has delivered. And it's After Sappho by Selby Wynne Schwartz. Now, in my opinion, this is going to be, as we say in the UK, a Marmite book. People will either love it or hate it or be somewhere in the middle. Um, it is told as a set of vignettes. I don't know whether you can see see this. We've got different headings and little paragraphs. And it's vignettes of a group of European women in the 19th and 20th centuries. And the theme that runs through, as the title um, suggests, the theme that runs through is the poetry of Sappho. And you get fragments of poetry all the way through the book. These women were all um, in Suffolk relationships. And as such, they were almost underground because at that time it was frowned upon. In some places it was illegal to have relationships of this type. We have women that I've heard of, Virginia Woolf, Vita Sackville West, um, Isadora Duncan, Sarah Bernhard, but there's a lot of women in here that I'd never heard of, not at all. People who are familiar with feminist writings would probably know this, but would probably know them, but I, I didn't. Um, a couple that I've mentioned, um, Romaine Brooks, Natalie Barney, I never heard of those at all. So, as I was saying, you've got vignettes about them all. I mean, sort of, um, and they're dated. And we start right back in chapter one. We start right back in um, 1885. And Lena Paletti, again, someone I'd never heard of. So you have little vignettes. And these vignettes are all connected, they all weave together and they show the interconnectedness of all these women and how their lives um, mingle and how their lives affect each other. Part fiction, part fact. Um, I didn't read the afterward. Um, the author writes a a note at the back, 15, it's about 15 pages. I, I didn't, I, I started reading the first page and I thought, no, I just don't want to read this bit anymore. It, it was just too, too many texts that were being mentioned. As regards the book itself, um, it didn't work for me because there was nothing for me to really get hold of. The vignettes were sort of so small, you'd have um, a sort of sentence about what one woman was doing, and then we'd move on to the next woman, and we'd maybe go back to the first woman, three or four vignettes down the line. And you, I was never able to connect with any of the women, so I wasn't, I, I didn't really empathise with them. I didn't really, get inspired by them. I, I wasn't that interested in what they were doing. Um, but the book on its whole, looking at the form of it, it's almost like, the way it's written, it's almost like being in an art gallery where your, your gaze goes from one painting to the next, to the next, to the next, as the vignettes go from one woman to the next, to the next, to the next. The thing is, in an art gallery, you will always get that one painting that will stop you in your tracks. You will stop and you will stare and you will be transfixed. There wasn't a single vignette in here that made me stop, if you see what I mean. Um, it reads, it could, it reads almost as non-fiction. Um, the 
writing reads as it's a no as though it's a novel but unlike a novel there's no plot there's no main character all the vignettes are held together by a collective we the there's a collective we running through the whole the whole book um we do not know it there's there is always this risk in life that we have our parts in a tragedy and we do not know it it's just a, a random line so this is we running through uh, a collective we all women together maybe i think it's going to be a very divisive book people as i said people will love it or hate it for me it just did not work and uh, I'm sorry if I've upset a lot of people, but it would be boring if we all like the same books, wouldn't it? So that is um, After Sappho. And uh, I will leave you now. I haven't got any more from the library yet, so I will see which is the next book that they deliver to me. So happy reading. Take care. <laughs>